Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I can only emphasize what Felix said. It's uh, great to see so many faces with WhatsApp and Airbnb being in town as well. Um, so what am I going to talk about? Um, Gino asked me yesterday at 10, 10.30 at night. We just finished dinner and he said, hey, you want to talk tomorrow? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? It's always good. So being up here, basically looking at all of you, the only <laughs> thing I really want to talk to you about is the future. Because aren't you all here to basically impact what is going on tomorrow? Like DLD says, what's the next next? So, entrepreneurship and the new workforce. Let me ask you something. You can just raise your hand, you can stand up, you can even, you know, put if, you know, give me some feedback if you feel very strongly. How many of you do you think are going to end up as entrepreneurs? And how many of you are going to go into, let's say, consulting or a corporate job? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's good, that's, that's amazing, perfect. Um, so, let's, let's start with one. So, Startup. Who's going to go out and who's going to start his or her own company? Wow, yes, somebody got up. I like it. I like it. Points for that. So um, that's good. Um, I actually looked at uh, the website and it, I was surprised to see that a lot of uh, percentage wise, a large percentage is supposedly going into consulting and uh, working for corporates. So seeing that a lot of people raise their hands right now, I'm very happy about that. So what happens next? What will the workforce look, look like in 10 years, in 20 years, or possibly even in two years? Now there are plenty of statistics. I know many of you work with, uh, let's say, BCG, McKinsey. You, you know the figures probably better than I do. Um, but up until 2000 and 25, 60% of the US workforce will be freelancers, or at least freelancing and or in some sort of startup and non-traditional uh, work relationship. So what does that mean for you? Entrepreneurship, maybe somebody will stand up again and will say what that means to them. Anybody? No, no, no strong opinions on that. But entrepreneurship, I believe, is something where a lot of people say it's all about agility. So it's all about lean methodologies. It's all about finding something to optimize in a way where we can take a process, develop a product, do pretty much anything by developing an MVP, just testing a thesis, just going out there, just getting feedback and just seeing whether it works or not. Is there agreement? Is there disagreement about that? Yeah. Yes, there's disagreement. Yes, no. Agreement. Agreement, okay, good, good. Well, I mean, hey, it's all about you know opinions as well, right? Anybody says, I completely disagree with that lady says, come on, stand up and challenge me. But agility and also the ability to essentially enact change as it becomes necessary inside a corporation is what sets apart and becomes the competitive advantage between the giant, which may have a pretty good business model right now, and the entrepreneur and startup that comes in and disrupts and simply says, you know what? We can do it faster, we can do it better, we can do it simply by optimizing something that's already there. Now, given what you're all studying, given, given that um, you are essentially looking towards tomorrow, is there anybody who says, I have something in mind that I want to do, you know, starting a startup that uh, will help corporates you know, in a one particular way? Is there one differentiating feature that one of you has come up during the last, say, months or years where you say, okay, you know what? I've gone through the program. You're raising your hand. No? You're raising your hand. Yes, please. <laughs> no, you, you raised your hand. Yes, I did. Yes? Oh, I, well, it's okay if nobody raises their hand. So, you raised your hand. Okay, so. What? Describe your innovation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do, do you have something or did you just stretch your arm? Uh, um, it helps accessing uh, the company, like it helps the companies access the community. The, all the people in 
basically. The <laughs> employees or them. employees or customers? Um, customers in the end. So it's about co-creation and open innovation, etc. So it's about enabling working together. It's kind of the direction you just told. Okay, and you created that um, to be used by corporates. Also, it's about collaboration. All among startups, like companies, communities, <coughs> students, entrepreneurs. Okay, that's very good. So, collaboration. So, the value of an individual, for instance, thank you very much, um, is one of the factors that actually allows a company to have a much more tailored view, and a, in a way, a unique view of the customer or the product or any in any way strategy um, that impacts the future of the company. So, given that a lot of new products and a lot of new startups um, are developing, how can corporates actually tap into that and use the knowledge that is the customer by, let's say, using big data? Now, we've had a company recently that we worked with, and they came to us and they said, can you help us? We, ha we have all this information, we have all this data, and we would actually like to find a way to work with small companies and small new innovative um, ideas and technology and or people to use that data to have a much better overview of the customer. And in a way, we said, well, that's all fair and good, but right now, we still have a huge problem with having all these ideas and having all these great concepts and actually being able to pitch these to corporates. Now, corporates, based on the research that we've done and based, of, based on our work with, with uh, big companies, have a problem with idea management. So, let's say you have a... I don't have something to write, but let's say you have a full cycle. So, you start in the beginning by incentivizing um, employees. So, you tell them, hey guys, listen, come up with a good idea, you know, pitch it to us. And then you don't have the process. And with, with that company coming to us, we said, we have all that knowledge. We have that knowledge about the customers. We have that knowledge from within the company. Now, how can we actually put that together? And this is where, for instance, big data and IoT takes away a lot of the jobs that were used to be done by uh, people actually going through market rep reports and actually looking at uh, the status quo and market assessment, which can now be done by technology. And now you have all this workforce, and what do they actually do all day long? You know, um, do they polish robots? Is that it? I mean, do they? Is 60% of the population eventually going to end up studying computer science? No. Yes. Um, so, in terms of leadership quality, that's also an adjustment that needs to be made in the coming years. Um, so, is there anybody here who says, I have something that I know I can pitch to a CEO or to, let's say, a, a big giant who's been in the industry who may not be as innovative as an approach and a solution to how to use idea management, how to utilize all that knowledge that they have about the customer and they, that they have about um, internal ideas? No. McKinsey actually, uh, a few weeks ago, McKinsey actually um, had a $250,000 grant um, that they offered uh, to various universities if they said, if there's somebody who can actually come up with that idea and pitch that to us, um, well, then they get that money and they can use with it, they can do with it whatever they want. They get a team, they get one year of support, and it turns out nobody could actually do it. So, yeah, now that I have limited time left, that's something I want you to think about. We live in this world where not only the relationship between the different um, customers, so the different stakeholders changes, but also we live in a world where we have all this data, all this information, where we have a lot of in intelligence that needs to be consolidated. Now, do we do that through human interaction? Do we do that through technology? Do we do that by changing the hierarchy as it stands? Because there's only so much that can be done through fast prototyping and building capabilities into building MVPs and shortening feedback loops. In a way, 
if a consultant comes up to you and says, I can optimize your company right now 10%, then I say, sure, that's great. But how does that help that company be more innovative? How does that help in a global perspective in 30 years, in 50 years, to take all that information, all that knowledge, all that insight that we have and that we've gained through technology to actually turn that into something where we say we can revolutionize the status quo of what it is right now. Because eight hour work days, they'll be obsolete sooner or later. So maybe in the coming days, weeks, months, you'll see something, you'll think of something, and you'll find you'll, a step, you'll get a step closer to how to solve that issue. Thank you.